Hello, ladies. Uh, hi, Ellie. Hi, Zoe. Lindsay. Uh, Sonia and Beth. And how are you doing all? How are you been doing? Uh, I watched this week's. Uh, uh, I watch. I always. I always come by to see what everyone is doing, and I always go by your personal your personal channels as well to see what you're doing on your personal channels because uh, I like it that much. So. Uh, I saw everyone was doing uh, pets today, and that's sort of what uh, uh, Ellie has sort of left off, left off with her pets and let off with her pets, and sort of set that as her theme. And she has both a cat and a dog, and then uh, Zoe talked about her uh, issues with pets, and then uh, who else is there, uh, and that she was not much of a dog person, that they're too whiny, and so on and so forth. And... Uh, then uh, Sonia was in her car, which is, you know, actually, it's not a bad place to vlog. Actually, uh, you know, that is a pretty good place to vlog. If she could do that more often, that might be actually, uh, if she could sort of fix up her car, if she w has something that she can bring into her car and do that, if she has this option to do that, that might actually be a good place to vlog from. Because uh, uh, it's sort of an interesting background and uh, not the usual setting. Anyway, she... Uh, was getting into the Hunger Games. I think everyone's sort of uh, excited about Hunger Games, and so she did her bit on that, and uh, uh, and wound up with, her, with the title of Ratness rather instead of Catness. So, uh, but I guess the, the, I guess you you could be of two minds with rodents. Some people do like rodents. But I think most people do like rodents, particularly even girls. It just depends on the type of rodent. I mean, rat and mice aren't that cute, but bunny rabbits, who are rodents, are. So, I guess it's uh, there's a uh, there's a preference there. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of a lot of girls also like uh, guinea pigs, guinea pigs and uh, uh, hamsters. Uh, I think they're all. Uh, I think a guinea pig is a rodent. I have to go and check to see if a guinea pig is a rodent. But uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> pet choices are, are are unusual. I mean, I I certainly I. No, I was no stranger to pets. I had a dog when I was young. When I was younger, uh, this was back when uh, animals were uh, allowed to be animals, and more often than not, if you had a big dog, the big dog stayed outside, and that's the way I had it. So my dog was uh, a Labrador Retriever, and he was kind of a silly little clown, uh, and and anyone who knows dogs. Knows that they knows that they are a whiny suck, and they will whimper and cry like they're being beaten to death over a tiny little thing. And it doesn't take much for if for a dog to just you know if if there's some food even if he's eating food with you, and and he's eating with you. Uh, the dog will always want more food, and if he doesn't get the food that he wants or sees, uh, there'll be a, a whole whining session. Further, if you go out any place or go anywhere without the dog, the w dog gets upset and starts to whine and cry as well. And there's a whole set, there's a whole session there that you you know trying to get out of the house uh, <laughs> or trying to get out of your yard. Uh, with a dog there sitting uh, sitting there cry crying and screaming so <laughs> well I say crying the dog puts on this you know this whimpering thing that uh, it doesn't matter whether the dog is being beaten or whether it, it, it sounds because it sounds the same it sounds the same way uh, <laughs> it sounds horrible it sounds, it sounds like you're doing something horrible with a dog and you're not it's just you know <laughs> it's just a dog being a dog uh, and of course, they'll always sniff around food. And if you're not looking, and they can reach the food, and they assume you're not looking. The, 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 I mean, this is I, I saw uh, I saw uh, uh, Ellie's dog, and Ellie's dog was kind of uh, sort of checking over his shoulders, looking around as he was sniffing the food to see if Ellie was watching. Because I've, I've seen this before when dogs will look will look around, uh, and even uh, when I was. Uh, had mice in my place here uh, when they were trying to go for food uh, before they went to for food they'd look around to see if anyone was watching them 
and everyone they found everyone was watching them did freak out and run away. Uh, and the dog is sort of the same thing, but if, it's not, if, if, if no one is watching them, then a very, in a very quick and sneaky move, they'll go and take the food and then they'll quickly scurry off to some place to hide and eat the food. Uh, cats are, are, are a little different. Uh, cats are uh, more solitary. They're not as social as they're not. As, they're not typically social the way most uh, the way dogs are, and so they could be in some ways uh, less of a needy cat, ne less of a needy pet. But uh, that's not always the case. Uh, I always, I always like the animals. I've never had problems with animals hanging around me. Other people have problems with animals hanging around them, and animals sort of seem to sort of sense this, the, how you feel about them. And if you're the type of person that you don't mind animals being around you, they kind of come up and they sort of, they start investigating you. Uh, dogs, of course, uh, have their typical greeting where, uh, uh, where in order to identify you, they'll just immediately start sniffing around your crotch and uh, that's how dogs greet each other by sniffing their butts, and you know, so they do the same things with humans. So uh, <laughs> you kind of have to get, you have to be aware that uh, as soon as the dog is going to start coming to identify you, first it's the hand, he sniffs the hand, and then he'll go for the uh, butt to try to figure out who you, you know, who you are, and that's how uh, you get your identification with a dog. And so there is a, a, particularly if you're in a crowd of people, there is a, a there is a brief and uh, awkward introduction with the dog, <laughs> and from then on out, it's it's uh, everything's somewhat a smooth sailing because the, it doesn't matter the size of the dog. Because uh, I've had friends with really big dogs like Great Danes. It doesn't matter the size of the dog. As soon as you become friends with a dog, all dogs, uh, large and small, become lap dogs. And it's one thing to have a uh, small Yorkie or, or one of those Shih Tzus and these, these little tiny purse dogs to come sit on your lap. And it's another thing to have a Great Dane come and try to sit on your lap. <laughs> if anyone knows a Great Dane, Great Danes, that's Marmaduke, they're essentially the size of a small horse. They're like a size of the, you know, if you want you know, get a pony. Imagine ha having a pony try to sit in your lap. Well, that's what it's like having a Great Dane to sit in your lap. And I've, I've had that before. I've had, you know, <laughs> big dogs, you know, uh, gone over to people's house. I, 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 I don't mind apple, uh, animals. I don't mind the pets. Uh, they come over, they sniff me a little bit. They get to, you know, they get to know me. And all of a sudden, uh, you get this big little uh, <laughs> small horse-sized creature trying to sit in your lap. And, you know, sort of cuddling up with you. And just sort of being your friend, you know. And, and you know, they're, they're licky, they're whiny, they're, you know. <laughs> they're all, all the things that... Uh, that uh, uh, Zoe Rue doesn't seem to like about dogs. Uh, cats do the same thing, but again, they're, they're smaller animals, so it doesn't really matter. They'll uh, first, uh, there's not the hand they'll go for, they'll go first for the leg and they'll sort of start rubbing up against the leg. And for those of you who don't know this and who know pets but don't really uh, uh, like pets or, uh, 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 or don't like pets or wonder why animals do what they do is when an animal rubs up against you uh, what they're doing is they're doing something called scent marking this is how they rub some of their body oils off and they know from when you come back that these the, uh, dogs and, and cats most animals have very sensitive smell sense of smell they can smell things down to the smallest uh, thing uh, smallest smallest parts per, per billion uh, you know in terms of the, uh, the amount of scent that's there so, if you're around the animal enough, uh, no matter how many times you wash your clothes, uh, the scent of the animal will be there and they'll recognize you from that scent. Uh, so cats do the same thing. The cats will rub up against you, if, uh, you know, and then they'll start sitting in your lap and then they'll start rubbing up against, you know. And otherwise, the, the, the cats and animals, dogs, they'll scent mark as much as they can. Cats do actually do more scent marking than than uh, than uh, dogs do, and they also uh, to some dogs. Some dogs actually do purr, uh, but it's not a sort of thing. It's it's, it's just the it's the it's sort of uh, it's they're like uh, children. 
and the purring and stuff like that is the way and even for dogs is the way they start relaxing so basically it's the purring first and you'll start seeing you know they'll get into a comfortable position with you and then after they get the comfortable position with you and you sort of got your arm around them like this and that's what they want and if you try to move your arm, they'll you know they'll put your their paw on you, and they'll sort of prevent you from moving your arm because <laughs> they want you to stay there. As they get, once they get into a good comfortable position, and as soon as they're in that comfortable position, and you know they're in the comfortable position because after the purring, the purring stops, and as the purring and and whatever the you know as the dog does its purring too, uh, stops. All of a sudden, the uh, see the cat's pur let me go back. The cat's purring is is a higher type of thing, and the dog's purring is a very low. You know, it's a, it's, a real, it's a real low. It's more of in the deeper throat type of thing. And after they stop, after they finish doing that, then they start yawning, and stretching, and really getting, in, really starting to relax and get into the sort of you know, <laughs> you know, relaxed type <laughs> position. And as soon as they, you know they start doing that, there's no, you, you, they're not going to allow you to leave at that that particular point in time. Uh, they've committed, they're going to relax, you, you have to sit with them for at least a half hour, if not longer, for them in order to, in order for them to really, uh, you know, get things, and they're not, they're not going to allow you to leave any sooner. Uh, basically, if, 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 if uh, when an animal, once you're in that position there, uh, it's up to the animal, when the animal gets up and leaves, that's when you're free to go, otherwise you're sort of stuck there until the animal's uh, had its, uh, its relaxing moment is, is sort of satisfied that it's relaxed and then it says, well, you know, it's been fun. I've had a great time here lying and I'm going to go out and explore someplace else. And that's what they do. They go out and they sniff around. They walk around someplace else. They go around the kitchen and uh, wherever they want to go. Uh, anyways, that's my experience with pets and animals. Uh, uh, <laughs> But right now, there's no more pets in my life for now because uh, I'm in an industrial unit and it's not too safe for them here. There's a lot of industrial equipment and uh, <laughs> we did have some wild cats last year. Uh, we'll see what happens as I go outside this year to see if the wild cats are around. Uh, we do have coyotes here. I've seen a couple coyotes are, uh, walking around. Uh, Coyotes are for me that they're basically like dogs. They're they're a smaller version of a of a of a, of a bigger dog, so I'm not really too concerned about coyotes when they're around. They they, they, be, they behave just like dogs. Their behavior is very like dog, very much like dogs. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, I'll leave that here for now. Uh, that's my experience with pets, uh, and other people's pets right now. I've gone to having my own pets to having uh, uh, enjoying other people's pets. And like the uncle, uh, whenever I get tired, I can I can leave and uh, leave the pet with the person, <laughs> and, and the uh, the responsibility of cleaning up after the pet, and because and the bigger the pet, uh, the bigger the uh, surprises and gifts that they leave you uh, that have to be picked up with a bag and a gas mask. <laughs> it depends on how it depends on, it depends on how well you can handle the smell. Anyways, uh, ladies, uh, that's it. This is my gift for you people for the weekend, uh, for right and proper ladies. Uh, I look forward to seeing what uh, uh, what uh, Ellie what, what our next week is going to be. Uh, pick anything. If you don't want to pick anything, just go on to a topic, and then we'll sort of follow along on that topic. All right. Have a good weekend.